Good morning. I'm Rolf Nolasco, Professor of Pastoral Theology at Garrett Evangelical Theological Seminary. I joined the faculty at Garrett in the fall of 2018, and in this short time, I have witnessed the seminary's commitment to respond theologically and practically to human questions and concerns, from immigrant and border issues, the insidious effects of various isms like racism, heterosexism, classism, eco-terrorism, and more pressingly, the COVID-19 pandemic, all of which bears at the heart of what it means to be human together. Garrett's institutional and collective commitment to mediate God's presence in a world that is fragmented and fragmenting is the visible expression of public theology and ministry. As a pastoral theologian, and this is unique to my own social location and multiple embodiments, the face of public ministry amidst the COVID-19 pandemic comes in the form of psychoeducation, and social activism, particularly on behalf of Asians and Asian Americans who are experiencing rampant xenophobia. One of the ill effects of COVID-19 is the pervasive sense of anxiety, of worrying about our health and those of our loved ones, of getting rattled by the prospects of unemployment and financial insecurity, of being anxious around this form of online or distance learning and the like. This anxiety, of course, is a normal reaction to this unprecedented health crisis. But bombarded by a never-ending new cycle of deaths and infections, this anxiety lingers and becomes a loud noise that intrudes our daily living and then renders us almost paralyzed, on high alert, and on survival mode. This emotional state hijacks our ability to be calm, rational and mindful in our responses to this health crisis. Worse, it compromises and weakens our immune system, signaling a fight and flight response that can often induce deleterious effects on our way of being. And one of the ways to take back control and which we have control over is to listen to our body and pay attention to what it is saying to us. These moments of heightened anxiety are characterized by increased heart rate, rapid breathing, headache, sleep issues, fatigue, muscle tension, sweating, digestive troubles, which are often linked with catastrophizing thoughts and negative emotional valence. When we experience this, I suggest the following intervention using the mnemonic word breathe. B-R-E-A-T-H-E. B stands for breathing deeply and slowly and calmly. The simple act of mindful breathing can activate our parasympathetic nervous system, responsible for making us calm and present and grounded. And I will guide us through a simple breathing exercise called 436 towards the end of this video. R is for remembering our strength and resilience, our source of hope and comfort that has and will carry us through this difficult and uncertain time. E stands for equanimity. As best as we can, maintain a sense of calmness and balance as we go through the ebb and flow of this new normal. This means having a mind that neither overreacts nor in denial but is open to whatever emotions this crisis brings to the fore without getting lost in them. A stands for affect or emotional regulation. Related to equanimity, when varied emotions are shored up, treat them not as enemies to fight or resist against, but as guests bearing gifts of awareness, exploration, and action. Cry if we must. Express fear in words or images or display gratitude to those who are toiling night and day to care for those sick with the virus. T is for timeout. Take a timeout from our screens or gobbling up COVID-related news. Cut the noise and focus on what is in front of us and make space to reconnect with ourselves and those around us. H is home, stay at home, literally but also stay connected to or inhabit through imagination a sacred space 
that evokes feelings of security, comfort, and peace. The shelter in place could also be an opportunity to shelter in God, who is our refuge and strength. An E for exhaling. As best as we can, exhale all the unnecessary and debilitating fears that clutter our ability to be clear-minded and inhale those that enlivens and gives us courage amidst this uncertain time. The other ugly side of this pandemic is the increasing number of xenophobic attacks towards people of Asian descent. Some of our students have been subjected to horrific acts of cruelty and violence. When the president of this country referred to this novel coronavirus as China's virus, the discourse suddenly took a violent turn and gave people permission to harass and attack the Asian community. Again, just a bit of psychoeducation here. This time I'm drawing from the discipline of brain science to uncover the neural mechanism that underlies xenophobic rhetoric and actions. When COVID-19 is racialized, it elicits emotion of disgust, which then evoke powerful combination of physical and behavioral reactions. These reactions are automatic and fast, involving our stomachs, vagus nerve, and the brain stem, among others, which then elicits acts of avoidance, aversive, or worse, elimination of disgust stress. So to my people, we bear witness to our collective suffering, and we hope that through our collective solidarity, we can resist against various forms of racism. Psychologically, I suggest that when we encounter expressions of otherization, it is best to walk away from this hot zone for bodily and psychological protection. Your safety is paramount. And so the best, and so do the best that you can to shield yourself at least physically from further attack. Then when ready, connect with people whom you can process this experience with. Be sure to not let anger turn inward. By that, I mean blaming yourself for the cruel acts of others. Instead, channel this justified anger outwardly. And this could take the form of joining or at least following our community's ongoing efforts to address this problem. The statement on anti-Asian racism in the time of COVID-19 put out by Asian American Christian Collaborative is a good start. In closing, I'd like to guide us through this simple four, three, six breathing exercise. And we do this first by finding a comfortable position and begin to settle your mind and your heart with a few deep breaths. If you can, put your hand on the part of your body that carries much of your stress this day. And with the next out breath, gently close your eyes. Now breathe in through your nose for a count of four. Hold for a count of three. And then breathe out through your mouth slowly for a count of six. Let's do this one more time. Breathe in through our nose for a count of four. Then hold for a count of three. And then breathe out through your mouth slowly for a count of six. When ready, you can open your eyes and direct a loving attention outward. Let me end this short talk with a benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make them face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord turn them face towards you and give you peace. Amen.